Hello aviators I welcome you on board flight of Captain Vijay in the series of flights to study meteorology for DGCA CPL and ATPL examination Today we will fly through the topic called thunderstorm Thunderstorm is one of the deadliest aviation weather hazards and all pilots want to stay clear of it at all times So in this video lesson we'll learn what atmospheric conditions lead to formation of thunderstorm different phases of life cycle of a thunderstorm and aviation weather hazards associated with it so fasten your seat belts as we are ready for take off we all have seen thunderstorm in our real life as well as in horror movies where there is frequent and intense lightning thick dark clouds rumbling thunder sound lightning striking the ground strong cold gusty winds and heavy rain and showers thunderstorm is a temporary meteorological phenomena which occurs in a large cumulonimbus cloud also known as cb cumulus means cumuli form something which looks like a cauliflower and nimbus means rain bearing so a cb cloud means cauliflower shaped rain bearing cloud and that is exactly how they look like Entering a thunderstorm intentionally or by mistake can have fatal consequences since a thunderstorm contains elements of every possible aviation hazards What makes a large CB cloud to form in atmosphere Well there are three atmospheric conditions which lead to formation of thunderstorm and they are as follows First is environmental lapse rate greater than saturated adiabatic lapse rate that is absolute instability in atmosphere through a layer of atmosphere at least 10000 feet deep and extending above freezing level so let us revise what is absolute instability atmosphere is said to be absolutely instable if parcel of dry or saturated air which is forced to move upwards continues to move upwards when left So this will happen only if the parcel of air is hotter or lighter than the surrounding atmosphere. That is possible when environment is cooling at a faster rate than the parcel of dry or saturated air going upwards. Or you can say when ELR is more than DALR, the absolute instability conditions exist in atmosphere. The second condition is presence of moisture or water vapor. which helps in formation of cloud and the last is triggering action which gives the initial push to warm moist air to rise triggering action which gives initial push to moist air can be any of the four forces that is convection orographic lifting convergence or frontal lifting you can appreciate the triggering action with the help of the diagram on the screen but all of them are just resulting in initial rise of moist air which due to deep layer of instability keeps rising to higher and higher altitudes well above freezing levels types of thunderstorm thunderstorm is mainly of two types first being heat type thunderstorm this is also called air mass thunderstorm Here triggering action for rising air is due to intense heating of ground convergence due to low pressure so that is why heat thunderstorms over land develops in summers and only during day when the insulation levels are high the second type of thunderstorm is called frontal type here the trigger for rising air is cold air mass undercutting warm air mass and forcing warm moist air to rise This type of thunderstorm is more severe as compared to heat type thunderstorm. This type of thunderstorm as the name suggests would form in winters in cold front and can be either during day or night since solar insulation is not required for initial lifting of parcel of air. Timing and movement of a thunderstorm. Over land heat type thunderstorm generally occurs in afternoon. in mountain and valleys it generally occurs in night or early morning and overseas it generally occurs in night 
Thunderstorms usually move in the direction of 10,000 feet winds. So the path of a thunderstorm during its life cycle can be predicted by finding out what is the prevailing wind at 10,000 feet. Formation of thunderstorm. Now let's see how a thunderstorm develops. The diameter of a thunderstorm is approximately 1 to 10 km. Due to triggering action, a moist parcel of air is lifted, that is it is pushed upwards. As it rises, it cools at dry adiabatic lapse rate of 9.8 degree per 1 km height. But since the environmental lapse rate is steeper, the surrounding air would be colder or you can say heavier at all heights and this parcel of air would go on rising. Rising above saturation level, the moisture converts to clouds and above freezing level, ice crystals are formed. Updrafts and up currents keep the water as well as ice crystals afloat in air. But when the water and ice are too heavy to be supported by updrafts, it falls down as a heavy shower. Thunderstorm can be in the form of an isolated large CB cell which can be visually seen and identified from long distance. But if these CB cells are already embedded behind a layer of cloud, then it can be challenging to identify them distinctly. While the base height of a severe thunderstorm can be as low as 1000 feet, the top of a large CB cell can go up as high as up to tropopause and occasionally even to stratosphere. So thunderstorm follows a typical life cycle. It has three stages. First is called initial developing or building stage. Second is called mature or developed stage. And the last is called dissipating stage. Let us see these stages one by one. Initial stage. In this stage, several small cumulus clouds combine to form a large cumulus cell, approximately 5 nautical miles across. There are strong updrafts or upcurrents of approximately 1000 to 2000 feet per, per minute. Air from the sides and below is drawn in to replace the rising air, thus causing turbulence. The initial stage lasts about 15 to 20 minutes and this stage is characterized mainly by having the up currents or the updrafts. Next come mature stage or developed stage. When precipitation occurs, the storm has reached the mature stage. The rain or hail will cause the strong down currents or downdrafts. But in mature stage, both updrafts and downdrafts coexist together. This stage lasts for about 20 to 40 minutes and this is the most violent stage of a thunderstorm. There can be extreme turbulence in, under and all around the cloud. Below the cloud, you may have squall and associated wind shear. Rising and falling water droplets will produce a considerable buildup of static electricity. Usually the positive charge is at the top of the cloud and negative at the bottom. The buildups eventually lead to lightning discharge and thunder. Last stage is dissipating stage. This stage is characterized by predominantly down currents or down drafts and no updrafts. Further development of a CB ceases. The top end of the cloud spreads out by the upper wind to form the shape of an anvil. At these levels, the cloud thin, thin out to form cirrus clouds and the dissipating stage may last for about one and a half to two and a half hours. So now having seen the life cycle of a thunderstorm, now let's understand why it is considered the most dangerous weather hazard. So let's see what are the aviation hazards associated with a thunderstorm. First is turbulence. There is violent or maybe severe turbulence at the bottom as well as on all sides of a CB cell. Airframe and engine icing. CB clouds produce clear type of icing which is dangerous. 
intensity of icing can be severe since the size of super cooled water drops in a cb are large next comes hail ice crystals as large as golf ball or tennis ball size measuring 5 to 50 mm can be found in a violent thunderstorm and it can severely damage the airframe of an aeroplane lightning top of cb clouds have positive charge and bottom has negative charge so there is very high probability of a lightning strike inside cb which can cause severe damage static static electricity builds up in a thunderstorm and static electricity interferes with avionics equipment using lf mf and hf frequency band adf needle locking towards a cb cell is a known thing in flying when flying near a cb instrument error due to large pressure variations and presence of up and down drafts your air speed indicator vertical speed indicator and altimeter will not give you correct indications imc inside a cb it is dark and instrument met conditions would prevail and this can also lead to pilot disorientation squall and gust squall and gust would exist below a cb cloud near the ground wind shear low level wind shear can be deadly situation which is associated with a thunderstorm creating microburst microburst are possible when the down currents are very strong they are confined to a region in the cloud of uh, approximately 3 nautical mile or 5 km across duration of the shower is less than 5 minutes if this kind of a microburst is present in approach path of a runway the aeroplane may encounter wind shear which can prove deadly and fatal at low altitude if not handled correctly avoidance of a thunderstorm hazards associated with a thunderstorm is so dangerous that it is always avoided no aeroplane should enter a cb cloud intentionally or otherwise so in commercial operations pilot changes their direction height or flight path to avoid entering a cb cell by at least 5 nautical miles pilots also make extensive use of onboard weather radars to identify presence of cb clouds in their path and take timely decisions to deviate away from them so hope this video helped you to understand one of the deadliest aviation weather hazard named thunderstorm and we understand why it is always best not to mess with it so with this we have arrived at our destination subscribe the channel for more such informative videos on aviation and do not forget to comment below about how did you like the video or if you want me to cover a specific topic so hope to see you on board again for the next flight until then happy landings